Imagine the scenario from Pirates of the Caribbean. It mirrors the current situation with Apple and their newly launched AI, Apple Intelligence. The AI industry has gone wild, with NVIDIA becoming the most valuable company and tech giants are battling to create the most powerful AI models. New gadgets are flooding the market amidst this frenzy. While other companies were caught up in this chaotic AI war, Apple took a genius approach by not actually building an AI. Instead, Apple Intelligence, despite its name, isn't a massive AI model but a collection of useful features like custom emojis, AI-generated images, AI notification summaries, and enhanced Siri capabilities. For the past few years, the race in AI has focused on who has the largest language model, with companies boasting about their model sizes and capabilities. Apple, a major tech player, remained silent for two years about AI. Now, they've introduced Apple Intelligence, which isn't the largest or smartest AI model but integrates features like custom emojis, image generation, AI summaries, and improved Siri functions. Surprisingly, they even partnered with OpenAI to incorporate ChatGPT. Initially, it seems underwhelming after two years of anticipation, but Apple's approach is clever. By not entering the race to build the largest AI, they've positioned themselves advantageously. The competition among tech giants has shown flaws in their AI models, from hallucinations to producing inaccurate or even bizarre results. In contrast, Apple has effectively utilized existing technologies to enhance user experience without over-promising on AI capabilities. Imagine trying to make an AI that can handle every prompt and provide accurate information on any topic. It's an incredibly difficult challenge that's bound to encounter issues eventually. Apple decided to let others tackle this problem and potentially falter while they focus on solving a different, massive AI challenge, accessibility. Here's an example. In some European countries, the default choice for organ donation differs. In countries where the default is to donate, people have to opt out if they don't want to donate, resulting in higher donation rates. Conversely, in countries where the default is not to donate, people have to opt in, leading to lower rates. This principle, called default bias, is what Apple is leveraging to dominate the AI market. Currently, if you want to use ChatGPT, you need to download the app, create an account, log in, and open the app each time. But with Apple Intelligence, you can simply ask Siri and Siri will handle the rest by connecting to third-party AI models like ChatGPT. This change makes Siri the default way to access AI on iPhones, which is significant. While you can still download the ChatGPT app, most people will likely end up using Siri for their AI needs due to its convenience. Think about how defaults influence behavior. For instance, my mom doesn't use AI today, but if it comes pre-installed on her phone, she'll end up using it. This strategy brings AI and large language models to millions of people who wouldn't have sought them out otherwise but will find them ready to use on their devices. This not only gives Apple control over AI access through default bias but also makes the specific AI model less relevant. Consider this. Do you know which factory made the t-shirt you're wearing? Probably not. You only know you bought it from Uniqlo or Zara. Even if Uniqlo and Zara use the same factory, your perception is that you have a unique brand name t-shirt. The factory, which is crucial because it made the garment, becomes irrelevant. This is precisely what Apple has done with AI. For most users, it won't matter whether Siri access ChatGPT, Claude, or Meta AI. They'll just use the default. To begin with, Siri will only integrate with ChatGPT but Apple has announced that support for other AI models will be added in the future. However, I bet most people won't care because Apple has made AI so accessible and convenient. Most people tend to stick with the default options, even for productivity apps. By making AI integration seamless and built-in, Apple ensures that users are more likely to use their default AI service without seeking alternatives. There's another crucial element to this strategy, one that many companies have attempted but none have successfully succeeded in making AI personal. No. Several have tried, like Rabbit, Humane AI Pen, and even Microsoft, but none have cracked it yet. Here's the twist. 
Apple actually did develop their own large language model for Siri to manage this personal AI. Here's how it works. When you ask Siri something, the model will determine if it involves your personal data. If it does, Siri handles it directly. For more complex requests, it will involve ChatGPT. To make this personal AI effective, Apple needs access to your most intimate and personal data, your messages, emails, news, photos, and even the ability to take actions. This integration allows Siri to offer a highly personalized experience, making it indispensable and deeply integrated into users' daily lives. Apple's approach goes beyond just integrating AI into Siri. It also involves enabling AI to perform tasks within other apps. Normally, tasks like sending a message, making a call, writing an email, or booking an Uber are securely locked within their respective apps, which regular AI cannot access. Apple's solution to this is subtle yet significant and was perhaps the most overlooked aspect of their flashy presentation. If you visit Apple's website for Apple Intelligence, you won't find this feature prominently displayed. You have to dig through the site to discover something called App Intents. These are small access points that app developers can integrate into their apps, allowing Apple's AI to interact with and perform tasks within those apps. For example, if you use Notion for work, Notion could add an app intent that lets Apple's AI read your Notion pages and another that allows the AI to create new entries. This makes the AI not just a passive assistant but an active participant in managing and executing tasks across various applications, seamlessly integrating into users' digital ecosystem. For example, creating a Notion page isn't new. Apple's Shortcuts app has used App Intents for two years. Now, these App Intents will be foundational in making AI genuinely useful. Apple has already integrated App Intents into their apps such as Calendar, Mail, and Messages, giving their AI access to emails, messages, and events. If you're an app developer with hundreds of millions of people beginning to use Siri to interact with AI, you'll feel pressured to make your app compatible with this system. This means creating these small integration points that allow Apple's AI to access your app's data, perform actions, and function as a personal assistant. The clever part of Apple's strategy is that by controlling Siri in app intents, they effectively monopolize user interactions with AI. Most people will use AI through Siri, a system Apple controls and the only way for AI to access personal information or perform tasks will be through App Intents, which Apple also controls. This means Apple hasn't just created an AI but has seized control over users' access to AI and the apps they use. However, one potential obstacle is developers. Over the years, Apple has faced criticism and even a U.S. Department of Justice investigation over high app store fees. Major developers like Netflix have boycotted Apple by not building apps for Apple's platforms. It remains to be seen whether developers will adopt Apple's App Intense system. Amidst these changes, there's a growing trend of people becoming disenchanted with their smartphones, opting for the toxic or minimalist lifestyles. And that's it. Thank you for watching this video. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.